Compute the flux of the given vector field across the rectangle with the given vertices. So the curve C is a rectangle, and we assume C has a positive orientation. Looking at the graph, the rectangle is graphed in red with a positive orientation. The given vector field is graphed in blue. Both the vector field and the curve satisfy Green's theorem, which means we can use Green's theorem to determine the flux. The flux is equal to the line integral along the curve C of the vector field F dotted with the unit normal vector N differential S, which is equal to the double integral over the region R of the divergence of the vector field F differential A, which gives the double integral over the region R of the partial of F with respect to X plus the partial of G with respect to Y differential A, where F is the X component and G is the Y component of the given vector field. And the flux measures the flow moving across the curve C. It is similar to Green's theorem, except flux integrates the perpendicular or normal parts of the vector field, while Green's theorem integrates the tangential parts of the vector field. And this is sometimes referred to as a divergence theorem in a plane. Going back to our example, f of x comma y is equal to the x component of x cubed, and g of x comma y is equal to the y component of negative x y squared. Next we need the partial of f with respect to x and the partial of g with respect to y. The partial of f with respect to x is 3x squared. The partial of g with respect to y is negative x times 2y or negative 2xy, which means the flux is equal to the double integral over the region R of the partial of f with respect to x plus the partial of g with respect to y, which is equal to 3x squared minus 2xy, differential A, and the region R is a region bounded by the rectangular shown here. Because the region R is rectangular, we will be using rectangular coordinates to determine the double integral, and we can let differential A equal dx dy or dy dx. Let's use dy dx as the order of integration. The limits of integration for y will be from zero to five. The limits of integration for x are from zero to two. Let's evaluate this on the next slide. We first integrate with respect to y, treating x as a constant. The antiderivative is three x squared y and then we have minus 2x times y squared divided by 2, or minus x y squared. And now we find big F of b minus big F of a by performing substitution for y, which gives us 3x squared times 5 minus x times 5 squared. And when y is 0, both terms are 0. Simplifying, the integrand function is now 15x squared, and this would be minus 25x. And now we integrate with respect to x. The antiderivative is 15 times x cubed divided by three, minus 25 times x squared divided by two. Simplifying, here we have five x cubed minus 25 halves x squared. And let's continue on the next slide. When x is two, we have five times two cubed minus 25 halves times two squared. And when x is zero, both terms are zero. Here we have five times eight, which is 40, minus, this simplifies to 25 times two, which equals 50. 40 minus 50 is equal to negative 10. Now remember the flux measures the flow moving across the curve C. So if we go back to our graph, because the flux is negative, this indicates the overall flow across the curve C is inward toward the region R, not outward. If the flux was positive, that means the overall flow would be outward across the curve C away from the region R. I hope you found this helpful.